This is part two of module five. Again, looking at mitigating risks, supporting preparedness and strengthening resilience to build forward better post-COVID-19 recovery. In that module, we will be looking at policies for promoting recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, the role of social protection in COVID-19 recovery. We've seen that uh, when we look at the COVID-19, we've talked a lot about health impact and social and economic impacts. So what we did in this module is we, we take a number of dimensions, just the main ones, because there would be a series of policies you can think about. And there, has, there have been common policies which countries have been implementing, but each country has its own set of policies. So we can't go across the whole array of policies. So what we did is we focus on a number of, of on a few areas, I would say like health, and then come up with policies which, which could be applied to make countries more resilient to future shocks, but also help them to recover from, from shocks and in particular from the COVID-19 crisis. What we've seen across this module, and when we look at the data for African countries, we've noted that the health system in many African countries tend to be weak with low ratio of hospital beds, a limited health professionals in relation to population size. So the policies which have been proposed by a number of organizations, ECA and other uh, international institutions have been the need to have to recruit sufficient number of trained personnel, the need to mobilize emergency health care and social safety net spending. Also, the inclusion of biological risk pandemic risk management in national disaster risk management system. Support is very important for African countries. Providing resources to African countries to respond to the health impact of the pandemic is crucial to strengthen the national health system, laboratories, hospitals, etc. Providing the technology, the technical expertise, the and also free license to manufacture drugs and vaccines for mass use is very important. Also have support towards the prevention and treatment of other diseases like HIV, TB, and malaria are very vital there in order to boost the health system of many African countries. In terms of policies, we look at health policies, but also economic and social policies. We all know that COVID-19 had lasting consequences on growth, trade, FDI, foreign direct investment, uh, prices, employment, increase inequality, increased vulnerability to poverty. We've seen that countries have been setting up a number of measures, putting forward a number of measures or stimulus measures to promote growth in the short run and in the longer term, like diversifying existing sectors, trying to find new sectors of activity, uh, trying to support businesses as well as workers, uh, protecting uh, businesses by preventing them to close down and as such preventing them to lay off workers, so protecting the livelihoods of workers. Support has been also extended in many African countries to those operating in the informal economy, support owners of small informal activities, but also small businesses uh, in the formal sector as well right ensuring decent work for for all and especially for those in the informal sector providing credit support loan support 
to micro, small and medium enterprises and also to self-employed. The other dimension, rather than focusing only on businesses and economic activities, have been a lot on social protection. Social protection across many African countries have been extended, right, to cover, uh, let's say, cash transfers, food aid, unemployment benefits, uh, paid sick leave protection plans, etc. There has also been uh, extension in tax exemptions, wage subsidies, suspend loan repayments, etc. So it's a mixture of policies just to mitigate the economic impact of the pandemic. The other element which we think is very important when we talk about COVID-19 in particular, because COVID-19 has been followed by a series of uh, restrictions and a series of health containment measures like lockdowns or closure of, of borders. And because of these measures, there has been a number of implications on trade, movement of goods, and, and basically this has affected many countries and many sectors. So what the policies which have been uh, proposed or recommended in a number of across a number of countries or for the region itself is to set up regional guidelines to improve coordination overcome border disputes and facilitate essential trade especially trade of uh, basic commodities like medicine food etc increase use of digitalization facilitation digitalized, sorry, facilitation of transport processes, adopt different trade facilitation measures. This is crucial to, to promote trade, to facilitate trade across borders, like uh, making custom procedures easier. Also, we've seen that with COVID-19, uh, the supply chains have been disrupted, right? Because uh, suppliers tend to be concentrated geographically. So when borders were closed, it impacted a lot on the supply chains. So there is a need to diversify further uh, and also the need to move towards greater self-sufficiency, right? And reduce dependence in the supply chain on only a few suppliers of few countries because when borders are closed, then they were highly impacted. So the other part of the element which we think requires uh, attention and also a number of important uh, strategies there would be in terms of digital connectivity and ICT. So we've seen that there is a need for greater policies, legislation, and framework, harmonize reg regulation to facilitate or improve digitalization landscape of countries, right? Make sure uh, you have the right legislation in place, uh, the right policies and framework in place in order to have trust in, in what's happening within the digitalization uh, environment. So cyber security is very important, raising awareness and establish appropriate legislation and cross-border cooperation is also crucial. Within the G G digital infrastructure, sorry, it's very important to ensure an increased internet speed, affordability, accessibility, establish a conducive environment for digital business and society. Connectivity is fundamental. So investment into the ICT sector is important, but at the same time, investing into ICT use for disaster risk reduction and management and also resilience. Now you can invest in your in your ICT infrastructure, in the 
digitalization of your of your country uh, building the infrastructure the connectivity but you need to have a skill uh, population that is you need to increase digital literacy enhancing ICT skill is a necessity to enable the use the productive use of these uh, equipment ICT equipment but also using the internet in, and this can also come communities can come together and be better connected and find solution to improve resilience. The next aspect which we think is vital when we talk about shocks and especially COVID-19 is to have appropriate policies for the education sector. We've seen that with COVID-19, this, this has highly impacted the education sector. So how do we build better and more resilient education system by boosting access to online education platforms and support for teachers, parents, uh, and students. No one is to be left behind, promote investment, greater investment in education, prevent student dropout rates, and also trying to mobilize resources to cover COVID-19 related costs in education. At the end of the day, what we want to achieve with these education policies is to build a resilient education system. The other aspect which we believe is fundamental because we've seen that during the COVID-19 pandemic is food security. How do we develop, uh, how do we strengthen food supply chain and how do we implement appropriate measures to facilitate affordable food supplies at the country level, especially? How do we strengthen social protection system for nutrition and have specific nutrition sensitive social protection program that is tailor-made programs to reduce food insecurity? We can also have measures to address the root causes of food insecurity, like increased agricultural productivity, through increased irrig irrigation capacity, technology transfer, new methods of production, etc. So by trying to promote food security, we will try to improve the livelihoods of the vulnerable groups accelerate investment towards a more inclusive, environmentally friendly and sustainable, as well as resilient food system. This should take place not only at the country level, but at the international level where development partners come together and see how we can support food security and the livelihood of vulnerable groups. Gender equality is also an important component. We've seen with COVID-19, women have been the most affected in different areas, whether concerning her participation in the labor market, but also in terms of, we've seen that domestic violence, et cetera, being unable to balance family and work responsibilities need to compare or to face additional care work domestic uh, work as well with working from home uh, strategy. So gender equality is very important. So what can be done? Adopting gender focused labor market strategies along with care work policies, expand social protection coverage to address the different disparities encountered by women, Digital transformation can offer opportunities for women to enter the labor market. Focus also on skills and training to use new technologies. Subsidize early childhood education. Focus on policies which allow women to balance family and work responsibilities in order to increase their labor productivity. Offer 
quality public and private care services. So we can have a range of other policies in the different areas we've been looking at, and it depends on the specificity of the country, of course, uh, when we talk about different strategies to be adopted. Then the next element that we think is very important is international support and recovery, especially for African countries. Development partners are encouraged to increase support to African countries so that they can adopt relevant policies, strategies, or invest in relevant sectors to cushion the impact of COVID-19 on their economies and on their societies. So donor and investment policy institutions, uh, communities, should also coordinate to mitigate global value chain dis disruptions. We've talked about that earlier. So there is a need to prevent these disruptions into the global value chain because then it has a number of multiplier effects which trickle to the whole or to the overall economy. We also talk about debts. Uh, extending debt moratorium for countries that are highly indebted or cancel the debt or reprofiling the debt, especially for those most vulnerable, highly indebted economies. We've seen that for many African countries, in fact, for the region as a whole, social protection plays an important role in promoting recovery. Having a robust universal social protection system is key to reduce poverty reduce vulnerability and reduce and prevent social exclusion. Having also well-targeted social assistance programs can also uh, contribute to leveling the positive effect of growth by ensuring a minimum level of social and economic welfare, as well as enabling equal access to opportunities. We talk also about social assistance registries, which can help in identifying of workers in vulnerable situation or facing a difficult situation in terms of poverty. Now we've seen that the crisis offers an opportunity to build a broader and more inclusive universal social protection system because with the COVID-19, there has been expansion in the social protection system of many countries, including a number of African countries. So having a more comprehensive social insurance system that covers vulnerable workers can, can be, uh, will be more helpful for many workers, working poor, for instance. ECA comes in its 2020 report and recent uh, uh, report in 2020 two with a number of recommendations, a number of policies is split across people, prosperity and partnership. In fact, these have been included in the handout uh, for module five, which you can look at it in greater detail, looking at the different policy responses which have been recommended by ECA. So this is the end of module five. Uh, we've enjoyed uh, having the course with you all. Uh, so this was the last module of the of the course. And if you have any questions or anything which you want more information on, please feel free to get in touch in touch with us. So we have two email addresses here on the screen, and I think we've also included it in the handouts provided. Uh, to you all so you can get in touch through email or through whatsapp and if you need any documents on uh, publications or reports etc you can connect with us on researchgate or academia or even google scholar uh, where you will have uh, the the readings which you're interested let's say in a particular area so we've enjoyed having the course with you and going through all these different modules. We will keep in touch and please do not hesitate to get back to us for any query or any additional information you need about the course or any aspect we've been discussing throughout the course. Thank you. It was a pleasure for both of us to be having the course with you.